Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris here with Shughead Gaming. Now, by now you've probably seen my review for Song in the Smoke, and you should have. So you know I think the game is brilliant. However, it has a learning curve to it and intentionally doesn't tell you much about some of its game mechanics and how they work. For some, like myself, uh, a big survival guy, I enjoyed this sense of discovery, but I feel that many will just want to know these things early in their playthrough in order to have the best chance of surviving going in. As such, here are 10 things the game does not tell you, but you probably want to know. First up, let's talk about resource management. While the game does away with grind mechanics like chopping wood and mining rock, procuring enough key resources will save you a lot of grief when you're under the threat of a predator or nightfall. As such, maybe take one of the first few days when you enter a new map, set up the main camp, and just go on a collecting spree of wood and rock. And when looking for wood, stick to the earthy ground floor levels, and for rocks, go to the riverbeds as these two areas will allow you to collect the most supplies in the shortest amount of time. Don't worry about cleaning out areas of resources either as they do eventually replenish over time. Eventually, you'll be able to build a storage sack, but in addition to that and prior to building it, just go ahead and get some piles going at your base camp. This will allow you to craft the night away, stock up on bark bindings, and get ready for the next day. Oh yeah, and when leaving camp in the morning, consider pre-building your campfire as there's nothing worse in Song of the Smoke than running home against the impending night and scrambling to get one lit. And speaking of fires, building a hot and long burning fire is key in this game as you not only cook your meat on it, but it keeps away night predators who think your finger looking good. And while fire building is covered in the tutorial, it doesn't really explain it fully. First things first, location. Consider something central on the map, close to resources, and if you can find one, look for a cave to set up in. Nothing's worse than waking up midnight because the rain just drowned out your fire and left you vulnerable to attack. And just like building a fire in real life, kindling is key to getting a fire started. As such, make sure you start with bark bindings and a few small sticks. Small sticks aren't necessary and any size wood will do, but they do help. However, bark is essential and requires the use of at least two to get a fire lit, though I always throw on about four to ensure a quick starting fire. You see, a fire will start and you can see the rings start to fill up around the 25% mark. However, like a real fire, you need the full size logs to light in order for the fire to not just die out once the kindling is gone. Not getting the fire to catch the way you want it to, throw another bark or two on there. Once it catches, you'll see the fire ring increase to at least 50%, and then from there you can pile on the wood to max out the ring. And then, add some more, because to get through a full night you will need more than simply a full ring worth of wood piled on. Oh, and you know those extra large sticks that don't fit well on the fire? You can grab those with both hands and snap them into two sticks, which fit a lot better on the fire. And while you're hanging around the fire, take a look at your inventory menu that pops up. It's not exactly like the one you get by simply opening up your cloak. For here, you will find three additional structures that can be built within your fire's vicinity. Simply drag and drop the icon, and if you see a green ring around it, then you can place it there. But you're not done, as this is simply the blueprint showing you what materials are required to complete that build. If you have them, simply hold them towards the structure outline, and when the part turns green, you have the right piece and you can let it go. Once built, these three additional structures are key and you will likely want to make sure you have the pelt drying rack, food drying rack, and storage sack built on each map, especially that storage rack, as this will connect to any prior storage sacks you've built and allow you to carry over access to these supplies from map to map. The food drying rack is also key though, for it will allow you to dry animal gut that is an essential component of building a bow. In addition, drying fresh meat is a major advantage over cooking it, for despite the small decrease in calories it provides, it will last substantially longer, allowing you to even stockpile meat for later use. Finally, the pelt drying rack, which is also key as it is here that once you have added and dried a pelt, you can then choose to craft additional items like clothing and sacks, while also making improved versions of both your cloak and quiver, which by doing so will increase the inventory space in each. All these items can be upgraded as you get better pelts, so keep an eye on this as you progress, especially considering that improved clothing allows you to increase your resistance to both damage and cold. And speaking of upgrades, yes, you can make better tools and weapons as you progress. The first and easiest, once you down an enemy that gives you a tooth, take it and add it to your club instant extra damage. Now besides this, tool and weapon upgrades are done by simply making them with better materials. For as you advance through the game, you will find better versions of existing materials or entirely new materials, such as using oak wood instead of pine or granite rocks over the earlier acquired shale rock. However, to really understand what impact these materials will have on your gear, it's key to understand the specs the game is communicating to you, even if they are a bit vague. First up, 
Most of the materials that you will scrounge up have both a quality rating indicated by what appear to be teeth icons and additionally a durability bar that will show you how much wear and tear they can take until they break. Now, these are both things to consider for every tool or weapon you build can wear out piece by piece, meaning you may have a bow crafted, but both the bow and the bow string wear out at different levels and will flash independently when that specific piece is reaching its critical breakpoint. So keep this in mind as you will likely go through three bow strings before the wood bow itself wears out. And fun fact, if you see the bow strings wearing out, you can just take a new one and put it right on top of the old one and uh, it'll renew its lifespan. Additionally, weapons will also give you a power rating so you can gauge its lethality separate from its durability when comparing one to another. Finally, keep an eye on both the quality and the durability rating of pieces of wood before you put them on the fire, as this will also help you to pick wood that will just burn longer. And speaking of weapon markings, see those tally marks on the bow? That's your ammo count within your quiver. It took me way too long to figure that out, though do keep in mind this will not include any additional arrows that you have sitting in your inventory that are outside of your quiver. Okay, let's quickly talk about potions. For while they are pretty straightforward on how to make, the game doesn't really tell you that to stop bleeding, you need to pour the antidote herb potion onto your hands. When bleeding, you will see red scratch marks on your hands, and doing this will remove the bleeding status effect and heal your hands. And speaking of potions, by the fourth level you will start finding gourds in which you can store potions in for use on the run. However, I recommend that you make yourself a batch of health potion in the mortar and pestle and simply store it in the mortar and pestle and just throw it back in your inventory. Now this next one is a simple one, but one I think worth mentioning for people just starting out. One of the most common issues you are bound to run into early into the game is hunger. For before you become proficient at hunting, staying full with berries can be a real issue. My tip for this is mushrooms. Mushrooms can often be found in two places. Firstly, if you see a rotten tree on its side, pay attention to the top and the sides and inside if you can get in there. Mushrooms love to grow there, and you can often harvest a nice little bundle. Secondly, mushrooms like to grow in dark areas, so when in dark caves or again inside logs, it pays to investigate the dark corners as there are often mushrooms there that are hard to see. Now, managing your time during the day is a key part of being successful in Song of the Smoke, and the biggest time suck in the game is easily harvesting parts from animals. Think very hard about what you absolutely need from that animal versus what else you need to accomplish during the day, as harvesting everything from an animal at once can blow a whole day, and if you're not careful, it'll leave you in the dark. Consider taking just what you need and revisit your kill at a later time. It will still be there, trust me. And finally, use the game's audio cues to your advantage as points of interest, whether it be objective markers beaming into the sky or the green ghost lady that will boost your health. Both have distinctive sound and music cues that will notify you if you're in the vicinity of one and telling you to get your head on a swivel. The music and sounds are a huge part of Song in the Smoke and they're amazing. Pay attention to them. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you've got more tips and tricks, please throw them down in the comments. This would be a great place for everybody to come and just kind of figure out how to be the best they can at this game. And of course, please consider hitting that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. As always, guys, I will catch you on my next video.